Mrs. Th Thomas. Here. Mr. Guidry. Here. Mr. Daly. Here. Mr. Spees. Mr. Blash. Here. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, uh, just a note that the second case on our agenda, case number 2020-2132, uh, has been withdrawn. Uh, is there anyone in the audience here to speak to that case? Good. Thank you. Uh, second uh, piece of business. We do have, uh, to the right, on the um, rail there, we have cards placed that if you would like to speak uh, both in favor of or in opposition to, other than the applicant. Um, please fill out one of those cards and bring them up. If, if you don't care to speak but want to um, state your position, you can also do that on this card as well. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, has everyone on the board had an opportunity to, re opportunity to review the minutes? of the November 4th, 2020 meeting. Yes. Great. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes uh, from our last meeting. Uh, second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Uh, please use your screens to vote. Are we set up to do that? Hang on. Okay. Oops, we only have... We don't have all the votes here. I didn't see it on my screen, Helen. Yeah. I didn't see it. We might have to re-vote. Okay. Is it, is it coming? Mine's not up either. Oh, I think it's because you're... Oh, this is where my controls are, then. Hmm. I'm still not okay. Might be because it's a, it's here that's supposed to. I can vote here if you want me to. I don't have a okay. Wait. Mr. You might have to vote there. Yeah. Should I hit here? Just give us a few minutes while we get this cleared up. Mr. Gidry. Do it again. Okay, 
The motion carries. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I do have one card. Uh, gentleman's name is Michael. Um, is it B U C H O N? He did not indicate which case number. Which case number would you like to speak? Okay. Sorry about that. 2134. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Moving on to the public hearing. Um, the first case on the agenda is uh, BOA case number 2020-2091. Uh, request by applicant in a PUD planned unit development overlay to reduce the required rear yard setback from 20 feet to 13.6 feet to allow for an addition to an existing patio. The property is located at 256 Masters Point Court, Slidell, Louisiana, uh, and the applicant and representative Eric Held. Is the applicant present? Please come forward and state your name. Uh, my name's Eric Held. One second. Staff comments, please. The objective of the request is to allow for an addition to an existing patio, which would result in creating a six, feet, six foot, six inches encroachment into a portion of the rear yard setback. Staff is not in favor of the request, considering that no hardship has been demonstrated to warrant support of the request. Although the configuration of the rear lot line varies in shape and angle, the size of the patio extension could be reduced to meet the required setback. Excuse me, could you turn on the timer? We'd like to turn on the timer, please. It's not on. Nope. Not on. Okay. Okay, my apologies. Uh, do you have anything else to add to the case? Uh, yes. Um, I just had some comments on some, uh, some of the hardships y'all said I didn't show. Uh, so we wanted to put a cover over the back door and patio to give more room for our family outdoor activities. Also, the roof would allow more coverage of the back of our house when it rains. When I have a blowing rain right now, I do have water that can come in the back door because I have no cover over it. That, present moment. Uh, we also plan on installing a pool on the other side of the patio and if I have to move my outdoor kitchen to that side because I, I can't get the variance it'll limit my access to the pool and make it difficult to, to get to it. Uh, so the outdoor kitchen in my opinion fits best on the side that is shown on the plans. We also had applied for a variance with the HOA with the complete set of the plans and they approved the variance. <clears throat> um, I also have a driveway on the other side of the patio that I'll have limited access to if I have to move my kitchen over there. Uh, the overall appearance will not look proportioned with one part of the patio with a small covered roof and the other portion the full length. Uh, we face the golf course and the current position of the proposed kitchen and roof is more aesthetic to look at rather than moving it to the other side. Uh, if the plans are adjusted, the transition point on the patio is right at my back door and would have a support beam to hold the roof just a few feet outside of my door. Uh, I have pictures also to illustrate this. I took of the house if y'all would like to see them. Uh, if you could bring those up uh, to Mr. Brookter. Um, my gas and water utilities are on the same side of the house. I plan to do the outdoor kitchen uh, so that if I move it, I'll have longer runs for the gas and sewer lines, and I'll have to cut some concrete to get it on that other side, 
And I also have steps that you'll see in the pictures on the other side of my patio that go to the driveway that will be tough to deal with. Uh, so we'd have to pay for additional concrete being repaired and replaced. And we also, like I said, have longer runs on the gas and water lines. I do have an estimate from the plumber of what additional cost this would cost to me. Uh, I paid, tw I also have a cost of what the plans cost. I paid 1200 for the plans. I'll have to go get the plans redrawn to make it fit the, if I cannot get the variance. And I also had a foundation plan drawn to support the columns that I would also have to pay to get redone because of the patio being adjusted. Is there anyone in the audience to speak in opposition to this case? Okay, I'll open the floor to questions from the board. <laughs> Give everyone a minute to review those, um, those photos. Uh, Ms. Daly? Yeah, I just want to ask oh, Mr. Daly. The fence located at the property line currently? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, you said that you have HOA approval. Correct. And I assume that your neighbors are part of that HOA and there's no problem that from is, your neighbors. That is correct. With that plan. Thank you. Anyone else? Valentine? I make a motion to approve the uh, variance request as submitted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, would the board vote uh, on your screens, please? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the third case on the agenda, BOA case uh, number 2020-2134, request by applicant in an MD3 medical facility zoning district to waive the required 10-foot buffer on the north and south sides of the future side property line and a waiver of the required number of class A and class B trees. The property is located at 67252 Industrial Lane, Covington, Louisiana. And the applicant is Avala Hospital, uh, Dr. Samir uh, Shamia. Uh, representatives, uh, Duplantis Design Group, uh, Scott Tabery. Staff comments, please. As stated in the attached narrative, the site currently consists of seven different lots to be combined into two separate parcels of land. The creation of the two parcels will result with a property line crossing some existing paved area, limiting the possibility to provide the 10 foot green space and the required number of class A and class B trees on each side of the property line. The applicant is proposed to plant or relocate the required 34A and 34B trees um, which is, this is calculated based on uh, linear footage of the property line on the site. Staff is not opposed to the request. However, there's a concern due to the small amount of additional green space available on the site to accomplish the planting of 68 additional trees. Should the board consider granting the request, it should be subject to the following. The applicant shall agree to provide a landscape plan meeting the minimum landscaping requirements and showing the location of the additional required 34As and 34B trees. And the replanting of the required 34 Class A and 34 Class B trees shall be completed before occupancy of the new building or no later than December 31st, 2021. Is the applicant present? Yes. Okay, would you uh, state your name yes. and address please? Scott Tabbery, uh, 4141 Bienville Street. Um, I'm with Duplantis Design Group, Civil Engineers. And uh, I actually have Michael, Mike Buecher with me who's with urban properties and he would like to introduce the project to you all. So I'll just pass it over to him if that's not a problem. Sure thing. All right. 
We would ask that you keep your comments to five minutes, please. Absolutely. Hello, my name is Mike Buecher with Urban Properties, 1582 Magazine Street, New Orleans. I'm the owner's rep for Avala Hospital, representing Dr. Samer Shamia, who's the chief medical officer. The um, the impetus for the property line, this variance is really cleaning up the property lines. The existing property in front of you on the site plan is comprised of seven different parcels. Um, to look at it um, in just its in a current form on the on the plot plan, if you have that in front of you, almost looks like a gerrymandered congressional district. And so, really, our intention is to have two properties a north property that the hospital sits on and a southern property which is a future development parcel we are in the early stages of that planning right now intending to build a medical office building on that southern parcel commencing construction sometime in the um, probably q2 q3 of 2021 so the property line as stated does currently run through some already developed parts of the site and then as it gets to the eastern part of the site, it goes into what is currently a wooded area, but is proposed to be parking once we commence development of the site. The, um, let's see, what am I? So our intention here with a huge site that's going to be developed is to replace the trees, the class A trees, 68 of them, I believe, that were required. But the reality is, is that the 10 foot landscaping buffer on both sides of this property line, especially you know, as it goes through a mostly developed site that exists, um, the Avala is going to be operating both the hospital and the medical office building, and they want this to feel like a cohesive campus. And so whether it's around the pond or other green spaces that we're planning for within the campus, we plan to provide those trees. I would like to comment that the occupancy of the building is not really planned to be until the end of 2022. So by the end of 2021, we'll have a pretty active construction site that won't be conducive to planting trees. If there could be consideration for an additional year, that would be helpful. This is probably about an 18 month construction project. Um, beyond that, I did wanna mention that we do have a slight tweak to the property line. It does not change the linear footage of, property, of setback that we're asking for in this variance. It just adjusts a small jog in the property line that happens about halfway back along the hospital that we actually need to move to the east slightly to accommodate a transformer and oxygen tanks that need to fall within the hospital property. But the reality is, is like I said, the dimension of the property line is exactly the same and it does not change the variance whatsoever. Um, so with that, any questions? I'd like to see if there's any opposition in the audience that would like to speak. Okay, I'd open the floor to the board for questions. Mr. Bruchter. Uh, as I look at your, your drawing here, you're com combining two lots, right, into one? We're really combining, we're taking seven lots and the output is two, seven smaller lots and the output is two bigger lots. Okay. So if you look at the existing map of the site, there are seven tax parcels of record um, of all various shapes and sizes. And the most simplest way of putting it is we're combining them all into one and basically then cutting them in half. And the hospital will sit on this northern half, excuse me, and the future development parcel is on the southern half. Gotcha. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Ballantyne. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the request for uh, variance um, subject to uh, two things, the um, uh, submission of a, a proper professional landscape plan and um, uh, replanting of the required trees, and I'd change the um, due date to December um, December 31st of 2022. All right, we have a motion and we have a second. Any discussion? 
Okay, let's go ahead and vote using your screen. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, BOA case number 2020-2135, request by applicant in an A2 suburban zoning district for an after-the-fact waiver of the required 50-foot no-cut buffer along the south side of the property where the single-family residence is located and to replant the partially cleared no-cut buffer, southern 50-foot no-cut buffer. The property is located at uh, 59375 Lacombe Harbor Lane, Lacombe, Louisiana, and the applicant representative is Ashley Ray. Is the applicant or their representative present? We both are. Okay, Mr. would you please state your name and address? Yes, sir. My name is Trey Lape, attorney for Mr. and Mrs. Ray. My office address is 1966 North Highway 190, Suite B. Covington, Louisiana, 70433. I'm here along with Mrs. Ray. Pardon me one second. Let me have staff comments. The proposed <coughs> replanting plan shows a total of 21 trees and 19 shrubs to supplement the existing remaining trees, creating a 15-foot wide buffer from the residence to the wetlands going westward. While an attempt has been made to provide some level of screening and buffering, the number the proposed number and location of trees and shrub does not meet the intent of the ordinance or recreate the 50-foot no-cut buffer. The plan shows long cleared spans with no replanting. Staff suggests that a scale drawing be provided from a professional landscape uh, architect or landscape uh, contractor with a larger number of trees within a 50-foot buffer and an evergreen screen between the residence and the adjacent parcel where the buffer narrows to 15 foot wide. Um, my staff report is written based on what was submitted. Um, but as you can see, I distributed a copy of the revised um, you know, tree replanting plan. Uh, it came to me by email earlier, uh, a little bit before noon today. Um, so it does not necessarily reflect the same numbers. I think there, it appears that a little bit more, a few more trees have all, are planned to be um, planted here as it's shown on the plan that I just provided. Uh, please proceed. I'd just ask if you keep your comments to five minutes, please. Yes, sir, Mr. Goodard. Do all of you have a copy of the uh, two-scale landscaping replanting plan that's in color? Mm -hmm. If not, I think you'd have a difficult time. Is your, are your copies in color? They are. Okay, good. Um, well, thank you again, Trey Lape, representing Mr. and Mrs. Ray. I understand Mrs. Ray came before you uh, previously asking for a wholesale variance of the 50-foot no-cut buffer. Uh, after she was denied, Mrs. Ray retained me, and I said, Mrs. Ray, we need to do two things. We need to do, number one, we need to ascertain what staff is wanting and expecting, and number two, we need to work with any neighbor who's willing to work with you. And so over the last five or six weeks, uh, staff, Mrs. Ray and I have had numerous iterations of phone calls and plans that were submitted uh, based upon the staff report that was issued last week in which it was asked for a two-scale drawing from a licensed landscape professional. My client uh, had her landscaping professional, uh, a landscaping architect in the name of Eric DeLauder, submit a plan after having spoken to the parish's staff, I believe it's an arborist, whose name is Reagan. So you have that today. Um, we believe that the plan that we've submitted today should be incorporated into Mr. and Mrs. Ray's request. They are no longer asking for a wholesale variance of this buffer. They understand that the purpose of this statute is to establish a buffer. Staff has been very clear over numerous meetings that we really would like to see the uh, plant species specified in the Muni Code be used. We'd like to see evergreen plants and trees used wherever possible. We've gone into the width between the plants, and it's my understanding that the landscape replanting plan that you each have in front of you um, tracks and follows that. I understand that staff got that today and was not able to include that into their comments. I'm sorry. Um, I'm asking that you consider the plan that, was, that you have in front of you uh, dated November 30th, 2020, as part of Mr. and Mrs. Ray's request. The second thing I wanna make clear to you 
is that if you look in your packet um, <clears throat> on the color drawing of Mr. and Mrs. Ray's narrow and lengthy piece of property, on one side, the north side, you have the Lacombe Harbor subdivision, and on the south side, you have the individual who was Mr. and Mrs. Ray's seller, a lady by the name of Mrs. Williams. <laughs> and throughout the entire, uh, I'd say, last six weeks, Mr. and Mrs. Ray have proactively approached Mrs. Williams directly and through her son, Mr. R.B. Williams, and have submitted not one but two letters of no opposition, both to her earlier request and as we worked with staff on what plants are we going to put in, how many are we going to put in, where are we going to put them in, Mr. and Mrs. Williams said, we have no opposition to this replanting plan. If you look at the tree survey that should be a part of the parish's record, you could, I have a feeling you're about to hear a lot of opposition from property owners on the north side. Mr. and Mrs. Ray cut hardly any uh, plants and trees on the north side. That's what the documents reflect. We're dealing with the south side of the property, and that's what the replanting plan addresses. We realize and do not argue that Mr. and Mrs. Ray uh, violated the 50-foot no-cut buffer. And so we're coming to you with uh, humility, asking for a variance to honor the intention of the code. Mr. Ballantine, you're nodding. Do you have a question? No? That's all I have. If you have any questions, I'd like to field them at this time. Well, we're going to have uh, the opposition uh, speak, and then we'll give you an opportunity to, re to rebut. Thank you, after, Mr. And then we'll open the floor for board questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have uh, two cards that were placed uh, for folks in uh, opposition uh, that would like to speak, and one is uh, Mr. Tony Lamont, and the other is Ms. Ilabel Isabella Moore. There were also, just for the record, three... Uh, other cards uh, of individuals who are against or in opposition but did not wish to speak. Uh, Mr. Lamont, are you going to come up first? Yes. Okay, if you would like to bring those up, we can, please. If, you could, if we could keep the total opposition uh, comments to five minutes, so please be aware, Mr. Uh, Lamont, that uh, Ms. Moore would like to make some comments as well. Yes, yes, sir, and Mr. Guidry, I want to thank uh, the members of the board for allowing me to come and speak in opposition. Um, my name is Tony Lamont. I'm a lawyer in Covington. My address is 512 East Boston Street in Covington, but I live in Mandeville, um, in Old Mandeville. And I'm here on behalf of the Lacombe Harbor Landowners Association, and um, I want to just cover a couple of things, um, a little bit of groundkeeping here. This case was argued already under uh, case number 2020-1907. So we are going back and reinventing the wheel here. There is an appeal process that you follow if you don't agree with the findings of this board. And that's taking the case up to the district court in, in Covington. That's, that's not taking place here. We have not, by the way, had the benefit of seeing this uh, most recent plan that was submitted apparently uh, hours ago to this board, which makes it even more difficult for us to address a plan we haven't seen. But be, be that as it may, I would like to point out several things, and just for groundkeeping, I'd like to ask that the board take into consideration the 2020-1907 record, the entirety of the record, all the arguments were made, all the evidence submitted, all the letters uh, that, were, that were submitted to this board at that time, and then take into consideration this board's ruling on October 6, 2020, to deny a variance to uh, Ms. Ray, which included a variance relating to the specific area that she's arguing now. In fact, the, the decision of this board at the time was that she was to submit a plan of replanting, refurbishment of the 50-foot buffer on the south side of the property. And that has, been, that has not been done here. It's in direct violation of this board's ruling and decision, I might add. Um, so with that said, let me just um, make a few points here. The application here is basically the same as it was before. The point about Ms. Marcia Williams being in consent is not relevant for purposes of the enforcement of the zoning ordinances. If, if neighbors could get together and agree that they're going to uh, violate the zoning ordinances or allow for vari variances, you, this board doesn't need to be here. The neighbors can take care of th things themselves. 
the, the code ordinances set out specific basis for granting a variance, and one of those bases is not that neighbors consent to a violation of the buffer zone. Um, and so that's not really relevant, not to mention that Ms. Williams, the evidence of Ms. Williams consenting to a smaller buffer zone was submitted to this board at the time of the 2020-1907 case, and so it's already been considered by this board. Um, I would also point out that these zoning uh, ordinances are enacted to protect the public interest, and they require that they be strictly enforced unless there are exceptional circumstances, compelling circumstances, according to the First Circuit. Uh, there is nothing here that's, that is compelling in this regard. There's been no evidence of any compelling reason for this. So even if the even if you know, under the doctrine of res judicata, which is a thing adjudged, and it's applied in, by the First Circuit to rulings of this board, this ruling's already been made. So it's really not relevant to even argue this before the board today under that doctrine. Um, but even if we were to be here and argue this, these points, we're not hearing anything new. Uh, regarding the basis, the compelling reason purportedly for granting this variant. Um, the idea is to protect the, um, the integrity of the area, the, the, uh, the nature of the zoning of this particular area, which is very rural. And um, we have a situation in which um, Miss Ray cavalierly cut trees in violation of the buffer zone and is yet and has acted equally cavalierly toward this board by failing to submit a plan for replanning within, that would require the entire 50 feet. I think the plan that we have, and I don't think it's probably changed that much, is a 15 foot buffer is what she's suggesting as a replanning, clearly violating this, the, uh, the October 6th ruling and decision of this board. And as to the replanning and refurbishment, I would point out and I've, and, I've, and I've done this in my November 30th letter. I hope that everybody here has that letter. But in that letter, I set out the criteria uh, of what should be uh, the amount of trees to be put into Mr. this Lamont, area. Mr. Lamont, I would ask you to please wrap it up in the next 30 okay. seconds. Okay. What I'm saying is that the character and nature and the number of the trees in this area, the location of these trees, does not nearly comply with what this board ordered her to do. And so uh, we agree with the, uh, with the, uh, the staff of the, the BOA that uh, we do not believe that this current plan complies with the, uh, the order of this, prior order of this board. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Lamont. Any questions? We'll come back to questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lamont, you have used up the full five minutes for the uh, opposition comments. I do know Mrs. Moore had requested to speak. Should she want to speak, I'll grant her one minute, and I'll grant the applicant an additional minute to make comments. Ms. Moore. Good afternoon. My name is Isabel Moore. I, I live in Lacombe, Louisiana. I've been before you before. I just wanted to ask all of you, have you been to look at this property in the last week and two weeks? Have you seen it? Have you seen what it looks like? There's no, there's no buffers that are, you know, most of the trees have been knocked down. I've watched bulldozers knock trees so that they could be removed because they're damaged. Um, you know, have book, have pictures if you'd like to see them, but that's all. I just wanted to make sure that you've seen what's going on on this property. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Would the applicant council like one additional minute to make comments? Uh, and it with so you'll have three minutes essentially. I to won't rebut. take that long, Mr. Gidry. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, with respect to Mr. Lamont, the suggestion that you're hearing the same thing again is simply not correct. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Ray did not come before you with a proposed replanting plan. Um, that is necessary. As soon as I was hired after this board's prior denial, I contacted staff and said, under my reading of the code of ordinances, we need to apply for the board of adjustments to review and, a, and approve, comment on a proposed replanting plan. 
through iterations of conversations with staff and the parish's arborist, we have presented that to you. You have that today. We want to reestablish the buffer that the ordinance calls for. As far as all of the conjecture about other trees that were knocked down, Mr. and Mrs. Ray are still subject to the parish code of ordinances. And I can, well, I don't want to assure you, I think it's a reasonable assumption that the same opponents who are here today, the Rays today, are going to be keeping a watchful eye to make sure that they're not violating this or any other ordinances. That's not before you to make a decision. We're simply asking you to consider the plan that the parish has asked for by a licensed arborist to allow them to move forward in an amicable manner. And if you have questions, I'm happy to field them at this time. We'll offer the opposition uh, two minutes to, re to rebut, and then we'll, go, we'll close the public hearing and go to board questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lamont, two minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. Uh, what, uh, what was just said by Mr. Lapp was that um, the proposal, replanning refurbishment proposal, is per the code. It's not. The plan that is being submitted is a 15-foot buffer. It's not a 50-foot buffer, which is what the minimum standard is. It's that simple. And if we allow, first of all, if we allow, um, if we have an appeal process for your rulings, and we allow individuals to circumvent that appeal process by resubmitting over and over again the same basic request for a smaller buffer zone, you really are going around the appeal, the appeal rules and you're, and you're going to end up having an avalanche of people coming back over and over again here and setting a da dangerous precedent in that regard. I would also suggest to you that allowing neighbors to agree that, oh, we're going to go with a 15-foot buffer when it's 50, with a 15-foot buffer versus a 50-foot minimum buffer, uh, if you allow neighbors to do that, you set a dangerous precedent as well. So not only is this... This, this matter uh, already adjudged and final. And I'm not really sure, and I've asked Ms. Lambert when the, uh, the October 6th decision was filed, because that starts the 30-day period to appeal to the district court. But that's, that's, the, that's the remedy for her if she doesn't agree with what's going on. That is her remedy, is to go to the district court on a, in a, on a timely basis, not to come back here and and rehash this whole issue over and over again. Thank you, and I'm, I'm here for any questions. Thank you. Um, I'll close the public hearing and offer uh, the board an opportunity for questions. Mr. Bruchter? Let me make a statement here, uh, Mr. Lamont. I, I want to make sure we're clear here. The last time um, Ms. Ray was... Uh, came before us, um, one of the things that we asked her to do was to work with staff to come up with a plan. And, and that was uh, the request uh, that we left her with the last time she was here. That's totally Thank you. Mr. Valentine? The minutes of the meeting from October 6th indicate that the plan for refurbishment, replanting were to refurbish, replant the 50-foot buffer, not a 15-foot buffer. The plan submitted that I've seen is a 15-foot buffer. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Valentine? Um, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am hearing the same thing again um, that we started hearing back in July. I think it was July or before that. Uh, we denied um, this request for variance in October, um, and we're um, seeing the same request again, only with some words um, changed um, minimally. Um, the plan that they have, the plan uh, that came with our package, that looks like it was drawn on the back of an envelope with a bunch of X's, and there's not sufficient X's for trees. Um, to consider that a plan of any kind. Our um, staff, landscape, architect is here. 
Um, we have to have a plan um, submitted to them that would include not azaleas and other shrubs, but trees, proper um, trees, live oaks, um, red oaks, and um, sufficient and in sufficient numbers um, to replace um, the buffers. Um, the applicant here knowingly um, clear cut and destroyed uh, that property, especially on the south side um, that is in the wetlands. And there are issues um, with the Corps of Engineers that, as far as I know, are unresolved. Um, so I don't want to put the board or St. Tammany Parish in between um, the Corps of Engineers um, uh, and the uh, applicant. The, um, this uh, request that we got in color, um, the, replanting, the replanting plan, in my estimation, is totally inadequate. Um, there are not enough trees. There are not enough of the right kind of trees. Furthermore, if we should um, um, move to approve this, we are setting a terrible precedent that all you have to do is keep going back over and over again to the board and eventually wear them down, they will approve your request. Um, so we do not want to get um, uh, into that issue or, or establish a precedent, a precedent there. As Mr. Lamont pointed out, there is an appeal process for this. Um, so I make a motion to, so that we dispose of this, I make a motion uh, to deny the request for variance once again, um, uphold what we did in October. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Before that. Okay, sorry. we have a motion on the floor. Oh, this I'll second, second then. Second, okay. We have move. a second discussion. Okay. Um, so in the new plan, uh, the staff recommendation was to have a 50-foot buffer sort of not by the house and a 15-foot buffer in the area of the house. Is, it, is that sort of a feasible um, replanting plan, or is there an issue that needs uh, you know, hardship to, to, to demonstrate that a 15-foot buffer, the length of the southern um, boundary of the property is necessary? Yeah. Mr. Daly, what I, uh, what Mrs. Ray did was ask her landscaping architect to liaise and work with the parish's arborist about what were they looking for. That is what we submitted to establish evergreens. And if you're looking on the plan, I'm looking at oaks, river birches, bald cypresses. I'm not looking at small de minimis plants. This is a good faith effort at significant expense to fix a mistake one that my client is not denying. So I would defer to staff um, who I understand has had conversations that I was not a part of. I cannot tell you, is it Reagan? Regan. Regan, what Regan and Mr. DeLauder discussed. I simply asked the professionals to liaise about what would reestablish the intent of the ordinance. And if I can make a comment about the appeal process, Forgetting the fact that the replanting plan was not before you before, a request for a variance is discretionary. I mean, we're, we're here asking you to consider this for reasonable purposes. And what would we appeal if you didn't have the replanting plan to review and consider? This is not a repeat of what we had before. You have new information in the form of a a proposed replanting plan from a licensed landscape architect who's had a number of conversations with staff and parish professionals. Did I answer your question, Mr. Daly? Well, I guess I, I wanted to follow up on the 50-foot uh, buffer portion that is not adjacent to the house or, you know, in a reasonable uh, area of the house. I mean, is that something that staff had talked about with your client? Yes, okay. and... There were specific conversations about, look, you're looking at a dot on a map. Well, a dot that represents an oak tree or river birch is a significant amount of space. So those selections, not only taken from the code of ordinances, but factoring that in, they discussed that. We're not trying to skirt 50 to 15 feet. I can tell you that in earlier plans, 
there were other selections that were proposed that were substantially less expensive plant material. So we are doing exactly what we understand, uh, you know, would reestablish that 50 foot buffer with the exception that the house is some 19 feet from the southerly neighbor. Right. I mean, I guess it's an odd position, but it's like the, the canopy of the tree in the 50 foot versus the actual trunk of the tree. I mean, it's odd because it's a no cut issue. Do, do we have like a precedent where we consider the canopy as being within the 50, even though the trunk isn't? I don't know if I was, oh, sorry. You're gonna have to move over here. Maybe while um, Ms. Regan moves to this end of the, of the, so she can have access to a microphone, um, you know, we just received this plan. Obviously, if you compare with, um, with the tree survey, there are some existing trees that are still present on the south side. Um, but I'd like to ask a question. So if we go from, I guess, east to west, I see four shrubs that are proposed. Um, is that next to the house? The house would be in this general area here, which would be between uh, the two oak trees, 15-gallon oaks, two of the seven 15-gallon oaks. And then in the midst of that, you would have it appears to be little Jim Magnolias. Okay, so where, if we start from the bottom, the four first shrubs, mm -hmm. that's, is that within the, the 15 feet where the house is located? I don't believe so. <clears throat> no, okay, I mean, so it, it, and if I could say it this way, in one of our conversations, you had highlighted two areas. One, say, on if the house is here, one on this side and one on this side house being here, southern side of the property. I think what we're, what my question is and what we're stating in the staff report is that since the house now is 15 feet from the side property line, staff suggested to have only evergreens next to the house and then start with the trees. But on this plan here, you're saying it's a scale drawing. What is the scale? That would be one of my first questions. And what is the width of the replanting? Is this 50 feet? Because unfortunately, this plan does not indicate that. Helen, I can only tell you that this was what was provided by my client's landscape architect. I understand after conversations with Regan, if this is not sufficient, then I would ask the board, rather than denying her again, with the first time a replanting plan has come before this board, give us a continuance, give us more feedback, We'll come back with what you're asking for. Okay. So and and the, one second, Regan. I think you were trying to get to a mic. Well, what, can you hold on one second, Mr. Perkins? Uh, uh, really kind, of uh, kind of talk us through uh, where <coughs> the uh, conversation you had with Miss Ray ended, and uh, what was your suggestion? Kind of enlighten us a little bit there. Sure. Um, okay, I'm on now. Um, so I did have one conversation um, with yourself and Miss Ray and Helen on the phone and subsequent conversation with um, her landscape contractor um, and who apparently turned in a plan today, which I briefly looked at. Um, the <coughs> things that I can tell you is what I suggested to him was that obviously we can't plan a 50-foot buffer between the 15-foot house and property line but everywhere else is supposed to be a replanted 50-foot buffer. Um, I have suggested that they use a mix of natives and also some evergreens to create a faster screen. I suggested that they could use smaller plant material, three and five gallon, which in a non-irrigated area will acclimate faster so that they could plant more trees rather than fewer, you know, 10, 20 gallon trees that will create just a single line and take a lot longer to establish a real screen. Um, so those are the kinds of things that I suggested. Um, I also suggested that they put the replanting on the same plan with the tree survey so that we could see that they were filling in the areas that didn't have existing trees remaining. 
So the plan that was received today does not have the house on it or the existing trees. So it's really hard to read as to whether or not it's um, sufficiently addressing the comments. But I will say that it's a single line of trees. So a single line of trees does not normally make up a 50 foot buffer and does not appear to be um, per the suggestions that I had given Mr. DeLotter. But without putting all the information on one plan that is to scale, it looked like it was a picture, a photograph taken of a plan and then emailed. So it's not a scaled drawing that I could measure from to see the distance you know, um, of the trees being requested. In the original of what Mr. DeLauder provided, I have given to Helen. And I was not aware of your request to Mr. DeLauder that the plan be depicted upon the existing tree survey along with an as-built of the house. We have no problem providing that. We are wanting to give the board exactly what staff has asked for and comply with the intent of the ordinance to fix the clear cutting that was done. I would simply ask if that's the direction that the board is heading, give us the time to go do that. Mr. Ballantyne? Um. Yes, it's not the, uh, my understanding, it's not the uh, purview of this board to approve um, a, um, a replanting plant. We have staff uh, that are much more capable of approving, reviewing and approving that plan than I certainly am. Um, so when we denied the request for this variance the last time, as Mr. Brookter pointed out, we um, told the applicant, your recourse is to get with the staff and come before them with an adequate plan. What you have submitted here today is not adequate. Um, and, uh, you know, it, we're not here to approve plans. That's the staff's responsibility. Um, so that's all. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Yeah. Yes. You know, at the last meeting, the request was denied. And, you know, the applicant here is coming back in front of the board. It is not they're trying to, you know, have the board grant or not grant them approval, but the board has, you know, the right and legal, please correct me if I'm wrong, to grant approval or not grant approval of the proposed plan. Recreating a 50-foot buffer the way it was before, well, it's, it's not you know, feasible. And that's the reason you know, the, that they're in front of you and you know, presenting a plan. It's you know, to be able to request a variance due to the fact that recreating this buffer the way it was before is, you know, not possible. It will. And Thank you, uh, Mr. Daly. I would just disagree with everything that was said. I think we certainly have within our purview to approve or disapprove of the variance, and I guess we're just missing the information. If we were to approve one that maintained, as staff pointed out, a 50-foot buffer where the house wasn't located and make it 15 there, we would need to know where that would be. And that's sort of our missing piece of information. May I respond? Sure. Uh, yes. Two things. One, uh, my understanding, my belief as an attorney and from conversations with staff, and I'm sorry, Mr. Ballantine, for your frustrations that we're back here before you again, but is that we did need to come back here before you again because we have to ask you for your permission for this variance. That was early on in my conversations with staff. Number two is, is that, I would like to give you the information, Mr. Daly, that you say that you're missing. Please don't deny my client again and have her come back and have to reapply again additional expense. We will come back to you well in advance of the, of the, of the hearing date uh, with a plan that Mr. DeLauder will pr uh, replicate on top of the tree survey and the as-built of the house will be shown upon that. If there's any other feedback that you have for us, we would appreciate it, and uh, we will be happy to incorporate that. I want to remind the board that we have a motion and a second on the floor, um, and we're in discussion. Uh, and Mr. Ballantyne, I think you have uh, the floor. Um, 
Yes, I um, I disagree with um, the staff's um, you know comment um, about that. Um, what what Helen was making her point, um, and um, you know, not my my frustration put aside. Uh, I believe we got it right in October, and I reemphasize um, that we have looked at this for the last six months, and the applicant has had adequate time uh, to put together a plan um, for uh, re returning the 50-foot buffer, and you can you can uh, attempt uh, outside of where the house is, um, you can refurbish that 50-foot buffer. And this is the reason why it is coming back to you because, you know, if you if you recall, um, I stated, or I asked the question to Mrs. Ray, um, you know, on the first plan site plan, the house was about maybe 70 feet from the property line. So now that the house is 15 feet from the property line, well, a request, to, uh, you know, the request has to be made to reduce that 50 foot to 15 feet. That's part of the first request. And the next request is you know, to replant. And that's the reason why they're proposing a replanting plan or requesting to, you know, some variances. Um, maybe I'd, we can confirm with legal that you know, it is their right to come back to the board and reapply. Mr. Lamont, pardon me. Uh, I've just been reviewing, <clears throat> excuse me, the minutes from the October meeting as this discussion's been going on. And honestly, it was unclear at the time and it's un about what was being done at that time. It appears based on the discussion that the Board of Adjustments asked Ms. Ray to come back to the Board of Adjustments with the replanting plan, which I believe were here for today. So I do believe that it's appropriate for the applicant to come back with a replanting plan. If it's not a satisfactory replanting plan and you all wanted them to resubmit a satisfactory replanting plan, that also can be requested and this matter be postponed or you all have the right to deny the variance, in which case it may become a code case. Um, but based on the minutes of what was done at the October meeting, it's my understanding that the motion was to deny the variance that was requested at that time and for the applicant to resubmit or to submit a replanting plan to the staff for future consideration. Thank you. Any further questions from the board? Reminding you there is a motion by Mr. Ballantyne to deny and a second by Mr. Daly. Um, please use your screens to vote. Mr. Daly. So we have one app abstain, two nays, and two yays. So Mr. Daly seconded the motion but didn't vote. It did. Oh, I abstain because I ultimately prefer to postpone So the motion so failed. Okay, since um, a motion to deny was made, which is technically out of order under Robert's rules, because no affirmative action has been taken, the board will now need to take up a motion if it wants to take affirmative action on this case. So right now, <laughs> nothing has been done. A denial of a denial is not approval of variance. So if the board um, wants to move to postpone or to approve that, that would need to be done by affirmative motion at this time. So a motion to approve could be voted on, or a motion to postpone could be voted on. So would anybody like to make a motion from the board? I'd like to make a motion. Yes, Ms. Thomas. 
I'd like to make a motion to oh, Please put your mic on. Hold on just a moment. Is that I'm, I'm, I have such a delicate voice. Um, <laughs> I would like to make a motion to postpone until the, um, we, we can get the plan that includes the house and all of the things that uh, staff has requested and the parish has requested. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to postpone by Ms. Thomas. Is there a second? Yeah, we have a second. second by Mr. Daly. Mr. Brookter, second. Oh, Mr. Brookter? Mr. Yeah, Brookter. Mr. Brookter is in line. Second and uh, discussion. No discussion. Let's move to vote using your screens. Motion carries. Four yeas and one nay. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask for a point of clarification? What date is it postponed to? Uh, let me look on my calendar. If I'm not mistaken, it is January January 5th, which is the first Tuesday of the month. Thank you all very much for your time. Have a nice day. Thank you. Moving forward to BOA case uh, number 2020. Uh, 2136 request by applicant in an A3 suburban zoning district to reduce the required so side yard no cut buffer from 50 feet to 20 feet to allow for the placement of a driveway outside of the wetlands. The property is located uh, at 1182 Dove Park Road, Covington, Louisiana. The applicant uh, is Paul J. Uh, Goodwin. Do we have staff comments, please? As per the Unified Development Code Section 130-2250-B2, a 50-foot no-cut buffer is required along the sides and the rear property lines. The objective of the request is to allow for the placement of a driveway outside of the area designated as wetlands, which falls within a 50 required 50-foot no-cut buffer. Staff, staff does not have any objection to the request due to the limited space to locate the driveway between the area designated as wetlands and the property line, which you can see on a drawing that is attached to your staff report. Moreover, most of the property will remain uncut. Only the road in the area where a residence is to be constructed will be clean. Thank you. Is the applicant or representative present? Yes, Mr. sir. Mr. Shane, please state Thank your name and address for the record. Uh, Jeff Shane of the Jones Fussell Law Firm at P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. Uh, and good afternoon, uh, Honorable Board. Uh, I have the pleasure of representing Mr. and Mrs. P.J. Goodwine, who are the owners uh, of this property and hope to build their residence on this site. Uh, if you'll take a look at the site plan um, with me, um, the story is as staff has read to you from its report. And that is, is that in order to avoid wetlands on the site, um, we desire to route the driveway uh, within the 50-foot uh, buffer that's on the south side of the property. Um, you'll see that um, it does not intrude throughout the entire southern boundary, obviously just that portion which is non-wet. I think you'd further be interested to know that there is a Cleco power line right of way on the south side of this property, not shown on the site plan. But if you look at the Google, uh, one of the other exhibits in your packet, hopefully you can see the lighter shade area that is just on, and I said south side, I'm sorry, the, the north side of the property. Excuse me, got my bearings mixed up. But you can hopefully see uh, where that right-of-way runs on the north side of the property. So the point is, is that we have some good separation uh, from our neighbors, uh, and obviously we would like to deviate um, and get inside the buffer so to avoid wetlands. Uh, this will be a uh, single-family residence on approximately 10 acres, uh, and it's being done in hopes of being environmentally sensitive uh, and staying out of the wetlands. So uh, we appreciate staff's thoughts and comments and hope that this board will grant the variance to my clients. If any of you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them at the appropriate time. One second. Is there anyone in the audience in opposition to this case? 
Seeing none, uh, open the floor to the board for questions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the request uh, for the variance as requested. We, ha we have a motion and a second uh, discussion. Seeing none, would everyone please vote using their screens? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, do we have any old business? Looking into the after the fact cases. Good. Okay. Contractors put it in their trick bag yeah. and offer it to an owner and say, uh, don't get a permit. You don't have to get a permit. Right. Um, we'll go ahead and do this in violation of the code because it's easier to go to the board and get approval. Right, right. Any additional old business? Yeah. I was going to say, I just think we need to remind ourselves, I may be the only one that hasn't taken the ethics in the sexual harassment and I'm pretty good at that sexual harassment part so <laughs> which <know>. way <laughs> good at which one <laughs> can't really can't really comment on that <laughs> I might perjure myself yeah, however until the end just of the year. as a reminder this month we've got to get it done. Yeah, you have until the end yeah. of the year to submit those <laughs> documents to me thank you miss Thomas um, any new business I have a piece of new business and I would like to engage with uh, our legal counsel miss could be on um, because this has come up before um, that a motion to deny is out of order and I would like uh, to get uh, just a better clarification on that for the board sure um, a motion denies it's not recognized by Robert's rules of order which is what the Board of Adjustments has adopted. Um, <laughs> I'm out of time, I'm out sorry. Of time, sorry. <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> um, which all the parish boards use Robert's Rules of Order. And the confusion comes in when, like what happened today, when a denial does not pass, mm -hmm. no action has been taken by the board right. at that time. Right. You all don't have to take action. Something can just die with no action taken. But you know, we always prefer to have a clear record in case these things are appealed. Um, and there's some question about whether a denial denials any action that um, can trigger those deadlines in the code to appeal to the district court. So we prefer there to be a motion to approve, and then if it's not passed, a, a no vote on a motion to approve isn't very clear denial on the record. I understand though that there are going to be cases that people just don't want to make that motion to approve. And that's true of it, the Parish Council, that's true of the Planning and Zoning Commission, that's true of the Board of Adjustments. There's going to be those cases, so it's going to happen. You all just need to be aware that if a motion to deny doesn't pass, you still need to then take action on that agenda item. Or no, purposefully it, not take action on that agenda item. No, no that's right. We don't have to do that. We can do nothing. Right. And that's perfectly acceptable. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to take if you wanted to take action, you have to do something further than just leave it at a no vote on denial. It, does it make more sense to just move to a vote, like without affirmation or denial within the motion? Or do we have to say which way we're gonna like how the vote would be? Like, could we just, move, well, I guess we could move staff recommendations. And is that's, that what, sort that's of the a, language that we have suggested in the past, is to move point. to... Um, vote to consider or something the, like the that? The vote to um, 
I forget the language that we use, but um, to adopt the staff recommendations. Okay. You know, in that way, it's clear what it is that you all are voting for or against. Ah. So when the staff recommends or, or says we do not approve of this, if we then vote to adopt the staff recommendation, it's a denial. Right. And do we have to, uh, so say it's like a complicated staff recommendation, mm -hmm. would we need to, can we just adopt as is shown in the, um, the, pat, the agenda, or do we have to sort of list out all of those items? I'm just wondering, so say there's a case and staff does recommend denial, but has some, uh, you know, a bunch of other verbiage, can we just, what part of that can we, go ahead. Well, today when I made the motion and changed the due date for planting the right, trees, right. Uh, to December 22nd, I mean, right. December 2022. 20, 20, yeah, 22. Um, yeah. You know, that, that's not that difficult to do. No, 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 right, right. See, it's, it's sometimes we have very complicated ones, or it's like, um, well, in that case, it was some, almost like uh, it was a denial. So I was sort of recommending a denial, but if they were to submit these things, but we can't really attach requirements to a denial anyway. So I'm just... I'm just sort of wondering what, what's the best way, say we, um, well, I guess I'll back up in the question of if we don't take up action, uh, is that sort of a tacit denial? Yes. And they're not allowed to come back. I mean, that's the appeal process, essentially. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, hmm. we always just prefer that there be a clear record. Right. And the clearest record is for an affirmative motion to be voted up or down. And then everyone votes but nay. But what's it's problematic with mm -hmm. this board is that you all are allowed to make conditions on the variance that's requested of you. So there are cases where you cannot just vote to approve or deny, or there may be cases where you want to actually include conditions as the staff many times does in their recommendations to you all. So it's not always simple. It's just a matter of making it as clear as possible okay. what you're trying to accomplish so that someone in the public knows exactly what is being put forward and what is being voted on. I mean, when I went back and read the October minutes from the last time, um, Ms. Ray's case, honestly, I was a little unclear about <laughs> what action had been taken. And so that's the primary goal is just to make it very clear what action the board is taking it, and what it was very, the staff it was very do. clear we denied that right. that variance just like when we made the motion today we were denying the variance we denied and, it and we've been successful Tom, but we also gave her a stipulation that if she came back which meant she had to pay another some of i don't know what the fee is five hundred five hundred dollars that if she came back with a plan a planning plan and all that kind of thing. So it wasn't clear to her. It, I mean, it wasn't clear to me. And then yeah, Helen and Carlin also so asked I, for clarification I, at the time. I think that that's a good point that we have to be very specific. If we go on and say, you know, get her hopes up and say, well, you can come back if you meet what the staff has recommended for planning, et cetera, et cetera. But if we had just denied today, I mean, she did come back obviously too late with a plan and it wasn't exactly right but the fact that they, that she was working with the staff sort of was what we told her to do so she had to pay another 500 to come before us again and, and we sort of had told her to do that so I, I don't I mean I understood where you were coming from um, and, I, and I respect that but I, I think that we were mixed in that so I think this is a healthy discussion to understand and how we can be clearer in in what we're trying to adjudicate. <laughs> well, the, the, the point I'd like to make is we, I've been on this board for a number of years and we have um, denied a lot of variance requests and it's been quite successful. And so I would say we can continue to deny knowing uh, we're not specifically in accordance with Robert's rules, but hey, it works. Wow. Well. Right, and if, it did, if a motion to deny passes, it's not a problem. Then there's clear action that's been taken. It's when a motion to deny doesn't pass that and I'm we, saying we, we just need to revote. Need yeah, to and have a up. Tom. And the reason yeah. I bring that up is because this is the second time we've had, and I thought maybe that would happen again today, but this is the second time we've had 
a motion to deny not pass in as many, uh, I think, three months. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it puts us in a situation to bring legal up um, to give us clarity because, I, I, quite frankly, I was, I knew how we proceeded, uh, I think it was two or three months ago with that, but not clear enough from the chair's seat to, to, to make the recommendation of what to do. That's why I wanted Ms. Cuvion to come up. Um, but I knew we were going to have to re-vote either to approve or postpone. I just wanted to make sure I was doing the right thing. I knew we were out of order with that. So, it, like, like she says, if, if, if the vote to deny passes, we're it's good. Not, but it's when problem. we just can't get... Right. Then we'll all have to remember we got to go back to either postpone or someone... Right. And I don't think it's a big problem yeah you know I mean it, we yeah. just have to have clarity you know I don't, I don't have a problem if we have a deny that that fails and then we have to move to a different yeah. motion that's fine you know it's yeah. part of the but process we we can let the denial stand we don't necessarily have to do anything but we didn't today <coughs> true we could have we could have can, not can I make yeah. a comment please yeah. Councilman District 7 for the area you're discussing tonight can I please make a comment yes sir to the Please state your name again, please. James Davis, uh, Thank you. the councilman for District 7, where yep. the area w in which you're talking about tonight. Uh, I ran over here after listening to this on the, on the, on the radio and uh, my phone, excuse me for being winded. Uh, one question is this, because I've been involved in planning and zoning now, the council and also a little bit on, on the BOA in the background. If somebody comes with the intent on trying to fix a problem and stuff like that, I would think you would at least give them the right to maybe postpone and try to even correct it more. Mm -hmm. Just to completely deny it again, uh, honestly, doesn't make sense to me. We didn't, we didn't and I think that's the... No, no, I'm just saying, though. No, I mean, action. even the idea, I'm, I'm thinking that, mm -hmm. again, I just, I plead with you yes. for her and for the other side as well. Mm -hmm. Because when the gentleman came up here with the lawyer and said, well, we should be going to appeals court, that's not correct. Mm -hmm. I was going to that is not correct. I mean, the, your legal essay just said, came up and, and said they were asked to come back and get a plan. If that plan doesn't meet your needs, then maybe go ahead and just just get with her again and try to see if it can meet your needs. That's my that's all my only concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other new business? How many cases we got for the next one? I think it's going to be. Four or five. I haven't did the full count. Today was the deadline plus the case that we'll have on the agenda that we postponed today. Thank you. Okay. Let, let me just them. say one thing. Okay. And I've kind of been on the board, I guess, 10, 12, 13 years. And uh, each time when you have a, a denial, uh, we have always tried to work with those individuals. Look at option one, option two. They have the right to go back and, and say we would like option two and, uh, and make the change themselves. But uh, I don't know, it seems like we're making this thing a lot more complicated than it really is. It's, 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 it's really very simple. And, and uh, talking to uh, this whole process, talking through this whole process uh, today, um, we denied Miss Ray the last time she was in here. But what we did, we asked her to get with staff and, and right. develop a plan. Because the plan that she had, it wasn't very clear. So we asked her to go back and do that. And that's why she's back here today. Because she was thinking that the plan that she had, and she kind of threw this on us at the last minute. We didn't have time to kind of siphon through the information, but, um, you know, it's, this thing is not that complicated. You know, it's, we, we need to try to work with our applicants to make sure they get their needs met, but sticking to what the parish guidelines are, and that we can't deviate right or left, but we sure can kind of work with that person to kind of make sure that, that uh, they get their needs met. And so the whole idea of her bringing the plans back for us to the next month, I, 
I think that was the right, right decision of the board. And also I'd like to make this comment is when it comes to replanting, as I stated previously, a 50-foot buffer cannot be recreated the way it was before by planting trees. I mean, nature is nature. The ordinance does not give us, um, there's, there's no regulation that states, well, if you clear cut the buffer, you should be replanting, uh, you know, 40 class A and 20 class Bs with, um, you know, 40, 50 shrubs. I'm just giving you an example. So basically, if well, the right. owner comes mm -hmm. to us with a replanting plan, well, it's, you know, if it goes into the, in front of the board, then the board votes on it, yay or nay. It doesn't become a judgment call from staff. And that's, that's one of the reasons why it's in front of you. In this particular case, she moved her house 15 feet from the property line. So obviously the house is inside the 50-foot buffer, so which, again, triggered the need to request a variance. Um, the ordinance does say, you know, in a 20 foot by 20 foot area, you, you know, it, it specifies uh, what is required in a replanting. That in every 20 foot by 20 foot area, you have to have, you know, some substantial tree. Which, which ordinance are you referring to? I don't know, the one that the lawyer referred to in one of the letters, many things he sent us. No. Yeah. I, I'm not really I sure. I just read I, it. I must have missed that point, but... Uh, it, in, it spells in it ordinance. right out in the ordinance. No. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think we have a replanting uh, in a buffer specific, so I agree. No. And we don't necessarily... When you don't have guidance to um, for something like that, it makes it a, you're in an impossible position of recommending something to us. So it's our, you're right, it's our judgment whether, whether it's adequate or not. So, and I don't like last minute materials, but if they were amazing and they helped their case, that's one thing. If it's vague, then, um, you know, it's impossible to make a good decision. Well, in this are, case, uh, again, it's- Are we it's legal about discussing this case? We, we're, we're on the new business and we were uh, asked for clarity yeah. on the denial process. That's true. <laughs> this case was part of so yeah I it's an open are, meeting i mean yeah, we're still in we're public still meeting, meeting. Yeah. yeah so we yes, can we discuss it adjourned. best we do it in a public meeting yes. and, uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. after the meeting now, yeah. <laughs> and basically there was a, a case recently um you know that was the same situation the property was clear cut it came back in front of the board and you know they submitted their plan um we were able to you know as staff be in favor because it came as close as possible, physically possible, to replant the 50-foot buffer, and the board voted in favor of it. Um, I understand, Mr. Blash, Mr. Daly, you, you were not on the board at that time, but you know, this is how we proceeded. I'd like to ask one point of clarification for myself. Mr. Lamont kept referring to that the process of appeals goes to, to an appeal court and I, I am not aware, I mean, I have been studying all of this, trying to, I took that special class and all that to try and understand it better. But this is the first time I've read that, so I, I didn't know that that, where is, um, yes, Ms. Kavion. So an appeal of a Board of Adjustment decision goes directly to the 22nd JDC, so okay. the main courthouse in Covington. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So unlike the Planning and Zoning Commission cases, which are appealed to the Parish Council, that's these are appealed directly to right. the District Court. Thank you and, for the clarification. And, that, and his point, I think, was a little off. That would be if she was appealing the denial, which right. she wasn't. She was bringing a new request. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's sort of a difference. Yeah, I was looking up at the time. Uh, I was trying to see if... Uh, what, how I can't hear you down here, though. Excuse me. Here you go. Let him finish. Uh, Nick Garisco, uh, uh, newly with the legal department, uh, I'm working under uh, Ms. Emily Kuvion. I was looking at, uh, I was looking on Westlaw to see different cases that showed uh, how many times, I, I thought the question was interesting that he posed, how many times can somebody come up here and, and offer the, or propose the same or similar types of, of proposals here and uh, one, of the, uh, one of the members here made a comment, well, are we just gonna sit here and listen to everyone until they wear us out? 
And so I was trying to do some research on that. I haven't found the case on it yet. I will research that before the next board meeting. But the, what it seems to be, in my opinion at least, is that, uh, like Mr. Daly suggested, if it's the same exact proposal that's been denied, they're appealing the exact denial. This was a little different because y'all actually gave them a chance to come up with a different submission. And I know the lawyer for this side did say why the submission was different. So I, while yes, ma'am, they would normally have to go to an appeals, I read the statute, that is correct. Okay. Uh, and they have 30 days to do so from when it's posted. However, uh, however, this one obviously was a little different just because of the nature of what's been, like Emily said, in the record and uh, that they did come with a different proposal by y'all's request. Uh, I guess my question to y'all would be, for the next time, are they coming up with a different proposal? Or are, they, are they supposed to be, is it a postponement of the same issue? It is. It's the same, same issue. Postponement. Okay. Okay. It's the same it, issue. It's All a right. postponement of the same request. However, yeah. you know, hopefully they'll be coming back with a plan to scale and, you know, showing 50 feet of replanting or close to it. Right. I would say that if they don't, then at that point, uh, you know, a motion can, can be made to approve or deny. And if that happens, they would have to appeal. Um, I guess a, another question I would have uh, for y'all, I'm not exactly uh, well versed on this particular procedure yet, but if somebody makes a motion to approve, that person does... Do they have to vote in favor of it if they make a motion to approve of it? Because otherwise, we can just always, or y'all can always vote, uh, I'll make a motion to approve, and y'all can just deny it on, or vote no, I guess, and then it would be denied. Yeah, that's a good point. Essentially. Yeah, you're just bringing While following it up to the, rules. Right, you're just bringing it up to vote. The motion just gets it to the floor to be yeah. voted on. Yeah. You don't have to vote with the motion even if you made the motion, and that happens right. a lot with the parish council. There are some cases, though, that, that, that no right. one wants to even to make that yeah. motion to approve. Yeah, definitely. It, it says here in Robert's Rules of Order in brief, it says that the, the chair, if nobody wants to make that motion, the chair can, it can uh, what's called put up the question. And that's, a, that's kind of a way of saying, uh, the chair saying that, uh, let's put this to a vote without somebody making that motion. Um, Interesting. So I, I want to clear before y'all start using that. I do want to clarify <laughs> that. Uh, as I said, I am new, and I don't want to just be, uh, you know, talking here. So, but but I will uh, oh, I will research that further that. before our next meeting. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Okay. Any motion other, to adjourn. Any other comments? <laughs> I have one. Adjourn. I have right. one comment. Uh oh, we have one. I'd like to share with you that it has been a pleasure working with all of you this year and I wish you all a very happy holiday and I look forward to next year and hopefully things will not be 2020 next year. <laughs> so happy happy holidays to each of you. Same, Same to you, you Ms. Uh, Thomas. Thomas. Thank you and thank you for everyone uh, making such uh, quality comments in this uh, new business section of the agenda. So uh, with that we have a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.